All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining today. Lee Dong, if you could advance to the next slide. All right. Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Ken Delaney, and I'm the Director of Industry and Innovation at Freedom. We are a power systems and power electronics research center at North Carolina State University. Our research projects span renewable energy integration, electric vehicle technologies, control techniques, microgrids, applications of wide band gap semiconductors, and traditional power systems analysis. We have extensive lab capabilities, including multiple simulation labs for HIL development, an electronics packaging lab, and a high bay lab for evaluating medium voltage applications up to 15 kV AC input. Together with our industry partners like ABB, Duke Energy, Facebook, and the New York Power Authority, we are leading the electrification revolution. Hopefully, everyone is familiar with Zoom by now. We have disabled audio and video for all attendees, and we ask that you use the chat feature to ask questions. Just hover your mouse over the Zoom window and the button should appear at the bottom of that window. Click chat, type your question, and we'll answer as many as we can. Note that this webinar is being recorded and will eventually be posted to the YouTube channel for the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at NC State. So I will now turn the presentation over to our presenter, Lee Dong, the stage is yours. Thank you, Ken. Um, thank you, Ken, for the introduction and uh, thank you for holding this webinar. Um, so, okay, let's get started. Um, so the topic uh, I'm gonna present today is residential load profile super resolution using the generative adversarial network um, basically, it's a load data enhancing tool uh, that can restore the high resolution load profile from the low resolution one. So this process is called the super resolution. Um, and we also leverage the machine learning based uh, approach and uh, specifically the generative adversarial network uh, that can significantly re improve the super resolution performance compared with the conventional load data super resolution method. Um, and if, if you are interested in this uh, technical details, please refer to our papers online. Um, okay, uh, before we get into uh, dive into details, uh, I will give you a quick uh, self-introduction. Uh, my name is Li Dongsong. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student supervised by Dr. Ning Lu. And I'm also a research assistant in Freedom Center. And my research, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> my research interest mainly include two parts. The first one is uh, deep learning based applications in power systems such as the load profile super resolution, um, uh, which I'm going to introduce today, and also the non intrusive load monitoring, and also the reinforcement learning in grid operation. And besides, I'm also uh, interested in optimization and parameterization related to topics in power system field. Um, so, here is an outline for today's presentation. So basically, first I will, uh, we have four parts today. First, I will give a brief introduction and the background uh, of this research. And then I will uh, introduce the approaches we adopt and some technical details. And after that, uh, some case studies will be introduced to demonstrate the advantage of the proposed method. And the last part is summary. Um, so as you can see, um, recent year, uh, we have uh, witnessed a stable increase of smart meter deployment. And this support uh, the boom of data-driven research in power system domain, uh, especially the low data, low data applications, such as the load analysis, load forecast, and load management. Um, but due to some considerations, like the cost of data communication and the storage, uh, most of the utilities only collect smart meter data at a relatively low resolution, such as the 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or even one hour. And this will greatly limit the data qualities and, uh, the and also the further development of data-driven research. Um, so here is an example of the load profile under different resolutions. So you can see with the decrease of the resolution, some useful information is lost. Uh, for example, the, the peak load is decreased and uh, some load signature, um, such as the on-off on minus of appliance disappears, um, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, signatures are hidden during the this downsampling process, and this motivate motivate us to try to find some approach to super resolve this low resolution profile into the high resolution ones, 
and uh, so that we can have a, a better data-driven approach application and uh, without any additional cost. So the goal here is to design a super resolution algorithm to generate realistic high resolution profile from the low resolution ones. Um, actually, the super resolution, super resolution is not a new topic. Um, it has been widely discussed in image processing domain. Um, the commonly used methodology for super resolution include uh, the interpolation based approach, the supervised learning based approach, and the recent year, a uh, noble super resolution algorithm based on the generative adversarial network, the GAN model, is proposed and got great success in image recovery. So here we want to see if we can also leverage this powerful tool um, in our system to power system domain to get some promotion results in the uh, load profile super resolution. Um, so here is a brief introduction of the generative adversarial network. Um, it's a powerful generative model which contains a generator and a discriminator. Um, the task of the generator is to take a latent vector as input, which is usually designed as a random noise, and generate the fake uh, but uh, realistic data. Uh, the, generate, the discriminator will take a mix of real and uh, fake data and try to distinguish them. Um, so basically, this is a pool player, min max game. Uh, in which the generator is trying to fool the discriminator and the discriminator is trying to distinguish the real and the fake. So through the competition between the two players, um, the generator will gradually learn to generate more and more realistic data always training goes on. And here is an example uh, on Amnesty database. So its goal is to generate uh, a realistic handwritten digits. So the left side is the real human handwritten digits, which is the real data set here. And the right side is the fake ones created by the generator uh, in the GAN model. And uh, um, as you can see, uh, with the training going on, the generator is generating more and more clear and real realistic handwritten digits. Um, so the most appealing characteristic of the GAN model is it can learn the distribution of the real data set so why this is helpful in solving the super resolution problem? Um, that is because the traditional super resolution um, problem is um, based on the um, mean square error. Means that they only focus on reducing the average pixel to pixel mismatch. And they will take the mean square error as the only loss function and try to reduce it as much as possible. Um, but uh, actually the super resolution problem is a ill post problem. Uh, means that uh, it has infinite solution if we only have the low resolution input. Um, uh, for example, uh, each of the low resolution image may have multiple corresponding high resolution ones, and these high resolution ones will get the same low resolution one during the downsampling process. So uh, with the limited number of information, it's never possible to eliminate all of the mean square error loss and fully recover all details unless the model is overfitting. Um, so the traditional approach will usually tend to conservatively output a general good results to fit most cases, and this will bring out um, the high frequency component loss, like this kind of oversmothed image. Um, but if we use a GAN model, uh, which take the low resolution uh, image as input to generate a fake uh, high resolution image, and the discriminator will take the real high resolution and the fake high resolution as a mix in and, uh, and try to distinguish them and pick out those fake ones. Um, because the real one, real uh, high resolution image contains um, high frequency component, such as a clear edge of the, uh, and clear edge and texture of the S and MOTH. Um, so in order to fool the discriminator, uh, the generator must generate an image that also has this kind of high frequency components. So through this way, the, the GAN-based uh, super resolution is able to generate um, realistic high resolution results compared with the conventional mean square error based approach. Um, so based on our observations, we also have the similar situation in load profile super resolution. So you can see the second one, if we use the mean square error based recovery, it could also, uh, it, it could only recover over smooth profile all of the half-frequency details, like the on-off manner of appliance is hidden. 
and cannot be fully recovered. So we can we want to see if we, we can also leverage this two dimension gain based image super resolution method in our load profile super resolution problem. Um, so here is how we convert the original two dimension image super resolution uh, into our one dimension load super resolution problem. So in the image super resolutions, the image gain based framework, its input is the low resolution image. Here is 64 by 64. And the generator will super resolve the low resolution into the high resolution fake ones. And the disk material will take both real and the fake image and try to give a higher score to the real ones and a lower score to the fake ones. Uh, theoretically, if the disk material is strong enough, the real ones will uh, finally get a score of one and the fake ones will be zero. Uh, but don't forget the generator is also trying to fool the disk material. So theoretically, if the hyperparameters are well designed, these two players will be well balanced and the image quality will improve in with the training goes on. So back to our load profile super resolution problem. Similarly, we can send the low resolution load profile into the generator and generate the fake uh, high resolution profiles. And the generator will take a mix of real and fake load profile and try to distinguish them. So in this way, those uh, over smooth the high resolution profiles are easily to be picked out. So the generator must avoid uh, over smooth output in order to get a hair score from the disk measure. It turns out uh, through this way, uh, the over smooth issue could be solved. And uh, uh, here is the uh, deep neural network structure we adopted. Um, basically, we, uh, we adopt a one dimension convolutional layer and the residual blocks. And the upsampling process is done by the convention, uh, convolutional transpose layer. And the discriminator extracts the features through the uh, convolutional blocks and uh, use a fully connected sigmoid layer to output the score between zero and one. Um, so the notation here, uh, the K means the kernel size, N, N means the number of kernels, and the S means straight size. Um, if you are not familiar with convolutional neural network, no worry, uh, you can refer to our papers later on if you want, if you are interested in technical details and the implementation. Um, so basically, this is a gain based super resolution structure. Um, it turns out that if we only rely on this GAN framework, it indeed includes much more high frequency component compared with the mean square of its ones. Um, however, the generated high resolution contains some un unreasonable details. For example, here, um, those spikes should be an air conditioner uh, of uh, appliance of a user, one user, single house user. So theoretically, the amplitude of the spike should be close to each other since the rated power is constant. But unfortunately, the, uh, the game model generator cannot capture this kind of features. Um, this is the real one. In the real ones, you can see that the spikes amplitude is pretty similar to each other, right? So um, to solve this problem, uh, we add a, a polishing network to fine tune those unreasonable details, uh, which is the second stage. It means that uh, in the first stage, we use the game model structure to super resolve and get a raw high resolution profile. And in the second stage, we use another network, the polishing network, to polish the a real high resolution profile and try to remove those unreasonable details. And the, the Polish network is trained with two uh, specially designed laws, the outline laws and the switching laws. Um, so the first is the outline laws, which aims to match the outlines of the generated high resolution profile with the ground truth. Um, it is using a max polling operator uh, which is a moving window with a certain window size and only keep the largest largest number in the window size. So in that way, we can extract the upper uh, upper outline and also the bottom outline if we add a manner in front of the generated profile. Um, and the second loss function is uh, the switching loss, which aims to match the switching behaviors um, based on the first order deviation observation. Um, so next is case study. Um, to demonstrate the performance of our model, 
uh, we have trained the, the trained the model on um, some part part of the Pecan Street data site. Um, so our data site contains 148 residential users with one year length. And if we split them into daily profile, we finally have over uh, 54,000 examples. And the original data resolution is one minute uh, in Pecan Street data set, and we downsampled it um, into five minutes as a high resolution and uh, 30 minutes as low resolution. And also we split the whole data set into three parts, the training site and the validate site and the test site. And here is the hyperparameters uh, that uh, is fine-tuned based on the validated data set. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of hyperparameters here, even if we don't uh, put the network structure here. Um, and every hyperparameter are very sensitive to, to the results, since we must maintain a well-balanced uh, competition between the two players. So it may need a great efforts in game model training. And as a result, there is a saying goes, no pain, no gain. Um, and uh, to quantitatively uh, evaluate the supervised solution performance, uh, we have adopted four metrics. The first one is mean square error, which, is, which measures the average point to point error. Um, it is also the, the only loss function in the conventional super resolution approach. And uh, the other three ones are ship related metrics, means that uh, they only focus on, uh, they mainly focus on measure the ship similarity. Um, the peak load error measures the uh, peak load discrepancy. The frequency component error um, reflects the frequency domain difference um, between the high-resolution high ones. And the last one is critical point error. Um, this one is a little bit hard to understand, but it somehow reflects the complexity of a curve. Uh, basically, it extracts the critical points in the curve, like the turning point. And we want these critical points to be matched as close as possible. And uh, those four metrics are all error. So in short, the lower the better. Um, to illustrate the advantage of our proposed method, the other four method model uh, also adopted to compare with our model, uh, the profile super resolution gain with polished network. Um, so here is the metric performance table. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, the CN model gets the best in mean square arrow. However, in terms of other three uh, ship related uh, metrics, our proposed uh, profile SR gain um, network uh, gets the best results in all cases uh, with a large margin. Um, more intuitively, uh, here are some examples of the super resolution results by different models. Um, the first one is linear interpolation, and in the middle three ones. Those three ones are mean square error based approach, the ASR, SRP, and CNN. And uh, um, this is the one with only the game based model. And the right one is the game plus polishing. And you can see that the game based model, uh, these two ones get much more high frequency component compared with the um, conventional mean square error based. And the one equipped with the polishing network get even better performance in terms of in terms of the peak uh, and also the uh, uh, offline and switching behavior. Um, the other evaluation is a non-intrusive load monitoring test. Um, so the non-intrusive load monitoring uh, model can disaggregate the electricity consumption at a, a smart meter level down to each appliance. Um, so basically, we train the NIL model using the real profile, and we sent the, uh, sent the gener uh, generated uh, high resolution from different models into the pre-trained NIL model uh, to evaluate the performance. So the logic here is that since the uh, NIL model is trained with the real high resolution profile, it could perform as a comprehensive measuring tool. Um, the closer the the high resolution to the real ones, the lower NIRM prediction error will be. Um, so we select four users from the Pecan Street data site and the super resolve the low resolution profile using different models mentioned previously. And the NIRM model is trained with um, 30 days and uh, test on five days. 
Um, here is the non-intrusive load monitoring test. Um, we adopt a root mean square error and the energy error um, to evaluate the NIOM predictions. And as you can see, our model gets the lowest prediction error among uh, all uh, super resolution models. And the more intuitively, and here we pull out the non-intrusive prediction of the air conditioner um, of the second user in the uh, in the candidates. And the first rule here is the ground truth of the air conditioner, which is used to train this um, NIR model. And the following rules are the air conditioner profile prediction based on the generated high resolution profile from different models. The linear interpolation ASR, SRP, CNN, and our profile SR game model. Um, so uh, since the air conditioner is a periodically working appliance, if the input does not uh, reflect the on-off behavior, uh, the NLM2 cannot capture the appliance behavior. And that is also the reason why those four mean square error based uh, approach cannot capture the appliance uh, behavior and uh, have a large prediction error. But in contrast, our GAN-based model can recover those high-frequency components and reconstruct the high fidelity load signature of the air conditioner so that it has a better performance in the uh, NLM evaluation. Um, yeah, here is a summary of uh, today's topic. Um, we have proposed a novel super resolution model for load profile super resolution using the GAN framework. And the matrix and the uh, non intrusive load monitoring test demonstrate the uh, profile SR GAN model outperforms, outperforms the mean square error based method. Um, and its advantage is that it has high frequency component recovery, it has high fidelity load signature reconstruction, and the most important one is that. It, it needs no additional cost. We only need to storage a small part of the high resolution profile for model training. And later we can use the um, super resolution tool to enhance the load data. Um, and in this work, we only demonstrate the promotion results in the uh, non-intrusive load monitoring. But uh, uh, I believe that uh, the realistic high resolution load data will also lead to profound contributions in all other applications yeah, um, that's all about today's presentation. Um, this work is uh, supported by the uh, United States Department of Energy, Office of um, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy under the Solar uh, Energy Technique Office. And uh, thanks for joining this webinar today. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'm very glad to answer. Thanks, Li Dong. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple of questions here, and I want to encourage other people to uh, add theirs as well. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Krishna has a question. Uh, since existing optimal power flow methods suffer from computational complexity, how can we leverage super resolution loads to solve optimal power flow? Um, uh, to be honest, I'm not uh, quite familiar with the optimal power flow optimization, but uh, um, if you have mentioned the complexity during the competition, I think uh, the super resolution ones, um, the target of the super resolution tool is to improve the quality from low resolution to high resolution. Uh, I guess the competition complexity issue is caused by tons of data, right? If you want to compress them without any information loss, that's the reverse process of the super resolution. Um, it's compression techniques. Uh, so I guess maybe the super resolution tool may not contribute too much in the complexity reduction. Um, yeah, I hope this answers your question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and then uh, Victor had a question. Um, usually random inputs are incorporated into the latent space of the generator model such mm -hmm. as you can observe different images as output of the generator. In your implementation, a single low resolution image will produce only one high resolution image alternative. That's a question. There's no randomness incorporated into the latent space of the generator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is a quite good question. 
and you get the key point of the generative model. And this is also one of the questions that reviewer uh, in the uh, where I want to publish the online journal paper. Yeah, uh, the, the conventional game model. Um, I will back to the diagram here. Yeah. So the conventional uh, game model will have a random input, but this random input is also um, uh, a simple from a, 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 a certain distribution, for example, the uniform distribution or Gaussian distribution. And it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's just, uh, in our case, our low profile super resolution, this di distribution is the low res the distribution of low resolution profile. Um, uh, if you if you are familiar with the demand response, um, residential users will have a particular using behaviors. For example, they will use much more uh, uh, low consumptions during night and uh, much more maybe some during the noon. And also, they will have a certain pattern uh, difference between the weekdays and the week, week, weekends. And this uh, reflects the uh, distribution of the low resolution residential data. And in our case, our input is one of these uh, low resolution. You can also regard it as we sample a simple one from the low resolution input distribution. And uh, this is just the similar as we sample one from the Gaussian distribution here. Um, so, so that uh, um, in the uh, traditional GAN model, uh, even the model input is stochastic, but once you determine one certain latent vector, it only could generate one certain image. In, in, uh, in, uh, in, another, in another word, it, it is also a one to one pair. Um, just the difference is that the simple is uh, stochastic. Mm, yeah, I hope this answers your question. Okay, Victor said yeah. thank you. Yes. Yeah. If anybody else has questions, um, please enter those in the chat. Yeah, um, I guess maybe uh, I go too fast. Uh, some audience may be not familiar with super resolutions. Yeah, but basically this is a very useful tool. Um, if we can, if we want to imp enhance the data quality from low resolution to high resolution ones. Um, so Leon, I know we had talked um, earlier about uh, if, if I were an electric utility, how could I use this tool? Oh, um, so currently the utility only um, gets the relatively low resolution data because of the high um, data transmission, data storage costs. But if we can use this kind of tool, we can storage only a small part of the high resolution data and use this, this part of data to train the model and get a, and later on, if we want to get a more high resolution data, we can just use the low resolution data as the input and use our tool to super resolve to the high quality, high resolution data. And this will save a lot of money in high, high resolution data storage and transmission and uh, get uh, um, relatively low qualities in data-driven applications in the future. And I know we had talked about that for, um, you know, utilities that uh, have installed smart meters, um, mm -hmm. that data storage is gonna be one of the issues um, with what do they do with all of this data? Um, and then you're right, the, the cost of uh, yeah. being able to store it and use it effectively. But yeah, yeah. This, is a, this is a great, a great way to make it uh, more affordable um, for utilities to leverage the data that they have without yeah. being yeah so expensive. Yes, yes, yes. And if uh, if if you they are trying to uh, focus one uh, one certain area users, uh, they can um, use a few. Currently, they can uh, simple some high resolution data now and train the model. They can also leverage the model to super resolve the previous storage the low resolution data as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions from anyone? And we did get one um, a, a request to uh, share the slides um, in a PDF and I'll send those out to attendees. Yeah, sure. Um, no problem. And just as a reminder, this is recorded. And so we will be posting this to um, 
the NCSU ECE YouTube page. Um, you can also view all of our previous recordings there. Um, we will have another uh, webinar next month. Um, and I forget what the topic is, but I think it's another power systems related um, presentation. And uh, if any of the attendees would like to sign up for the Freedom Newsletter so that you can be kept up to date on all of our activities, um, feel free to respond to the invitation with uh, to, to my email and I can add you to our email list. All right, one last right. check here for any other questions. Yeah, if you have further questions, feel free to uh, let me know, and uh, uh, I'm I'm very glad to answer uh, on offline. Um, and here is my email. Okay. Nothing. Thanks again, Lee Dong. Thank you, Ken. All right. All right. Thanks to everyone who attended. We'll end the webinar now. Thank you.